Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, young lady. How are you? I'm doing good. A little tired, but I'm doing good. I had a rough week. <laughs> really? Well, next, yeah. week, next week will be better. I think Mercury's in retrograde, so that doesn't help at all. That's got to be it. Yeah, I had my, my daughter in the hospital this week. Oh. And I had my father's in the hospital not doing so well as well. So it's been really tiring going back and forth, back and forth in between the readings. Yeah. Physically and emotionally, you know? <laughs> yes. But we're we're ready. We're we're good to go. <laughs> okay, everybody, send her prayers and her and her daughter and her father. Send prayers, guys, and healing energy. Uh, all right, today Eric uh, will hopefully be able to bring in a Madeline McCann, the little girl who was abducted apparently in Portugal while her uh, I think her parents were at a tapas bar and they left her in the hotel room or apartment room with her with the twin toddlers. Is she on the other side? What Eric is saying, first of all, hi, Mama, I love you. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Hi, baby, I love you. And you know I do. He's saying, I know. I just, I like to say it out I loud. I know, I know. That's so sweet. <laughs> That's the first thing I should have said. I'm such a bad mommy, bad mommy. <laughs> um, he's saying, well, you know, um, Maddie is on this side. Okay, okay. Um, because there were some reports that she was a homeless teenager named Maria. There was a, another report that she was sold uh, to a rich family who were grieving over the loss of their child. So, you know, there's all sorts of uh, conspiracy theories that happen, um, you know, when, when a child goes missing is not found. He's saying, yeah, well, you know, everybody wants to have her found and everybody wants to know what's going on. And so yeah. um, human brain um, need explanation. They need to know what happened. And so yeah. they'll start creating their own reality in order to deal with pain. Yeah. Um, we see that happening a lot in a lot of cases where people feel really close and, or they feel really related to, um, you know, having a child or, or um, you know, being worried about that child. And, and, and in a way, Maddie really became everybody's child. Yeah, and we wanted her to be alive, you know. And, and, and everybody still is. Yeah. So um, we'll do anything to self-heal and we'll do anything to come up with an answer in order to um, – justify in a way what happened or justify her uh, disappearance or try to make sense of it. There's so many different emotions that are uh, related to a missing child. Yeah. Um, in this case, you know, um, it really brought awareness to children missing. It really, um, she became a face of all the children who are missing and, and, and everything that goes with it. So um in that aspect she really brought awareness that people need to help each other trying to find these missing kids yeah. um everybody works together um but you know um he's saying she is here um, well hello maddie thank you for coming she's saying hello um she's saying um i would like to talk about it she still presents herself as a little girl, um, which, but she feels very, her energy feels like she is not, she might not be able to reveal everything. Okay. Because it might damage um, people or, um, cause she's making me feel, she's saying this is for your own protection. Okay, all right. Well. Well, Whatever you could tell us is fine. We'll respect that. Can you tell us about that night? Um, she's saying I had a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And I woke up, and I woke up crying. And because I was crying, my little brother woke up as well. Mm -hmm. um, she's saying I was crying, and I was calling my mommy 
but mommy didn't come. She's saying mom and dad finally showed up and I was upset that they didn't come right away, that I had to wait so long. Mm -hmm. They got angry with me because I was upset. Um, they told me to go back to sleep, that I needed to sleep, that, that mommy and daddy did not have time, they needed to sleep. Um, she says they gave me some medicine so I would sleep. Okay. All right. Uh, were they drunk? No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. And then what happened? She said, um, somebody took me. Who? A friend. A friend of your mommy and daddy? A friend of daddy. Okay. A male or a female? Male. Okay. I'm trying to ask her if she is already deceased or if she is still alive when she's been taken because I'm a little confused on it. Because she's showing me how somebody's carrying her in her in his arms. But I'm not really sure if she's already passed on or if somebody's taking her. Were you, were you, did you uh, transition when you were being carried? Before you were being carried? Were you already on the other side? She's saying yes. She had already passed. Was it a reaction to the medicine or an overdose from the medicine? Feels like an overdose. And your mommy and daddy knew what had happened? Just my daddy. So does your mom, does your mommy not know what really happened still? She knows now. But oh, she didn't man. know at that time. Oh, gosh. Oh, I bet they were horrified. She's saying, I was confused. She's saying, because Daddy told the man to take me. And so they put me in a car and they drove me um, I can just it's so hard because she really feels like this is still affecting her like this is still sure sure um, it's been so long though but it's it's almost like she's protecting people. Like she doesn't want to give details. Um, it's almost like she's protecting her little brother and sister. Okay. Um, but she's making me feel, she's showing me a picture. Like there's, they're driving. Mm -hmm. She's showing me like there was um, a man by the wheel. Um, and there's like a female in the car as well. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't look like it's her parents. These are different people. Was the female um, coupled with the, the male, like his partner? Romantic partner, wife, girlfriend? Um, she's saying that they were friends or, or they had seen, she says, I've seen mommy and daddy talk to them. Are they people that uh, da mommy and daddy met at the resort? She's saying yes, they, they were friends, but they, yeah, she just says friends. Did they know, did they know these friends before the vacation? Let's see. Mm -hmm. To 
doesn't feel like it. But maybe these were people. Maybe they met on the vac at the resort. That met, yeah, that they met there, or that they knew from that area, that they had been there before. Um, she's yeah, she's not. She just keeps saying friends. Okay. Um, I saw mommy, daddy talking to him. They're showing. She's showing me a picture of them um, having fun at the pool with them. Okay. Well, um, why didn't your mommy and daddy just not notify the authorities? It was just an accidental overdose. Um, because daddy didn't is afraid he's afraid he's going to lose everything he's worked so hard to build up mm. for oh. okay can you tell me the name of the man and the lady that were driving your body if you don't want to that's fine okay all right where where is your body now um she's saying i am in the water Okay. Are you in like a culvert or something? It's like she's she's showing me there's like a foresty area, almost like a park kind of thing. Um, then she's showing me dirt roads that the car would drive on. Mm -hmm. Dirt roads. Um, she's saying she wasn't um, they didn't get rid of her body right away though. Hmm. Is what she's saying. Okay. Um, it's almost like they hid it until they figured out what to do, and then uh, oh, she's she's just showing me her her body. Um, it's almost like it's underwater, deep water, shallow water, like a little pond or. It's pretty deep, and she's showing me. Uh, what looks like um, they're like cargo uh, ships mm -hmm. that are passing by. Okay. So there must be like some kind of port or some. Um, okay. You know where they they those big ships with the big cargoes on them. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of those passing by. She's kind of showing me. It kind of looks like an edge. And then there's like sea or water. I think it looks like a sea to me, um, but it's somewhere. There's a curve in the in the land, and it does like that. Okay. And then there's um, it looks like um, she's just showing me kind of a map, and it looks like there's a kind of like a little lake in the middle of. In the middle of the the park area, the the foresty area, and it kind of looks like um, like little fingers. It kind of looks like little things like that. Okay. The water. Okay. And she is on on this side, so on the left of it, um, she is over there. So it. it So it's definitely north, um, and then um, you have a little lake here, and then on the left side of that lake, you can see the edge, so like uh, kind of a, uh, a shore kind of thing. Um, but it doesn't look like a beach. It just looks like a drop-off. Okay. And it looks like she's showing me boats that are passing by on a regular basis. Is she in the lake or the sea, fresh water or salt water? The sea. She's in the sea. The lake is on that side, but she's... Oh, I see. Okay. Well, uh, can you give me a town or the name of the park or forest or anything that you're close by? Any identifying things that we can use to help find your body? She's saying it's about an hour from where she, where her body was taken. About an hour okay. from where she died. And what coordinates from the resort? North, northeast, north, an hour in what direction? 
She's saying north. Due north, okay. All right, but you don't see a, can't name a town or city or village or anything that's close to I, or the name of the lake? A word, but I don't know if that's a town or it, 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 it feels to me like there's more to it, like there's different parts to it. Okay. But um, it, the word that comes up is like Vicente or Vicente. Okay. It's like V-I-S-E-N-T-E. -E. Okay, okay. It feels like there's new parts missing. Like I, I can't get the full um, name. Okay. All right. Well, that's a lot right there. Where were you hidden first before they finally disposed of your body? In the car, in a cabin, and no, it looks like a, kind of like a warehouse. Okay. Any other details you can give us? Mm. Um, she's talking about a white car. Okay. A white car. I'm trying to see if I can see what kind of car it is. Kind of looks like I don't. I get. I don't know the brand. It kind of looks like a bulky car. Okay. Not <laughs> a bulky car. It has like a. Square back. I don't know. Okay. All right. That's fine. White. That's fine. It's definitely white. Okay. Um, are you upset with your parents, or do you forgive them? Um. She says. I have forgiven them, um, and the answers are coming. Mm. So she's saying that you know the lessons that they w will learn from this are still to come. Um, she's saying my biggest concern or my biggest uh, your sister and brother. Yeah. Where I spent most of my time is, is trying to protect my brother and my sister. Um, he says, I don't blame mommy. But she is protecting somebody who is hiding things. She just feels really disappointed. Yeah. She really feels let down. Yeah, the mother should have, when she found out, should have ratted out the husband. But then she'd be in trouble too, but, you know, still the truth is the truth. Are you saying the truth will come out? She's saying yes. Um, but she's making me feel like um, it's not, it's not going to be this year. It's still going to be a couple of years. Okay. All right. Um... How how was your relationship with, with mommy and daddy? She said mommy was my favorite. Oh. Um. She said daddy was um, controlling. Um. I always had to behave, and I always I was never allowed to have fun. I was mm. never, you know, he always. He, he was strict, let's just say it that way. Strict and controlling. Um, Did he use physical discipline at all? She says sometimes. Hard spankings or just a swat on the butt or whatever? She says just spankings, um, but he could... Um, he was verbally 
very very strict um a lot of yelling scary he could be very scary he scared me a lot oh poor you um do you think it's it's okay for parents to leave their kids alone in a hotel if (laughs) if they're relatively close she says no and i didn't understand why my nanny wasn't there because she was in the resort oh really oh i didn't know there was a nanny involved Ugh. what does she know the nanny know what's going on no she doesn't know wow mm. um what can we do to help you well she says you know for me there's not really much <laughs> we can do um well are you okay are you happy i i am i am okay i'm still because this is there's still no closure because this is still ongoing and the deceit continues mm-hmm. uh, it affects me from uh, my human perspective when i get close to my family I can really feel the fakeness and, you know, it's like the fake mourning and all that. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it's, it bothers me. Well, sure. And I don't want the same thing happening to my brother and my sister. What do you mean? Uh, What same thing? Um, the drugging, the um, whenever we were too hard to handle, they would, uh, you know, give us sedatives. Do you know what kind of medicine? Okay. She says no. So how can we help you? She says never, never forget about me. Of course not. She says, and please uh, look for the other children as well. Look too much over them. Yeah, she says too much attention has been spent on me. Too much money, too much, um, too much resources have been spent on me. While the other children still have a chance, yeah. and no looking into them. Um, please use use your your fundings and use your um, you know the capability to do. Um, equal treatment for all the other parents who are missing a child. Yeah. Uh, okay. Divide equally, and, and, and she says, "Please, um, it's okay to let me go." She says, "It's it's time. Um, the truth always comes out. Yeah. The light always wins. Yeah. Um, and um, one of these days, some somebody's going to talk." One of the days somebody is going to crack and when that day happens um, the truth will be revealed Um, will we ever be able to find the truth through investigation no Um, too many mistakes were made during um, the research Um, evidence were lost when police started coming in Uh. She says, um, on purpose, like were the police paid, paid off to lose things no, or was it just a bungling? Just not on purpose. Okay. She yep. says well, things were hidden away, but, um, when the police was called saying that I was missing, you know, a ton of policemen walked into that room, didn't even think about evidence. And, um, you know, they, they would have been able to find something. Um, but, you know, it, the evidence was not usable um, because it was contaminated. She's okay. saying, you know, it's okay, she says. It's okay. Um, Do you have a message for your parents? She's saying, I forgive you. Um, and I love you, but you will never heal until you face the truth. Do you still love both of them, including your father? 
She says, I do. He's still my father. Who gave you the medicine? Your mother or your father? Feels like the mother. Okay. Do you have a message for the police force? Um, she's saying they need to start looking into, um, and this is for the police force all over the world. Um, she's saying more and more girls are being taken. Um, for being, more and more girls are being taken to sell. Oh. Uh, and she's saying this is this is really becoming big business. Um, yeah. And um, if they don't Guess stop it. people, uh, it's not going to be safe for any girl to go on vacation. Mm. Um, she's saying my case was different, but what I am uh, trying to do and what I am uh, training myself to do is to try and help these uh, girls that are being taken, uh, drugged, abused, uh, and sold for very high prices. Um, they are being popular. So that's your life's work. That's what I'm doing now. That's awesome. Next to helping my brother and my sister and my mom, um, I am helping these children um to cope to accept with what is going on because it is very hard for them to get away mm. a lot of them are being locked up even in dungeons uh, beneath very big houses um she says police departments police forces the governments know about these groups nobody talks about it Nobody spends any time looking into it. What? Why? They know about it. Why don't they do anything? Because a lot of the customers are very influential, rich people, also government people. Um, that's why a lot of um, influential people in the world would be exposed uh, and they cannot risk that. Well, are, are these people, influential people, paying the police to look the other way? Or is it just the police are afraid? Or both? A little bit of both. Some people are protected by governments and they are not allowed to be arrested. Um, other people get paid off. Um, she's saying, start listening to your heart instead of um, hiding from the truth. Because when you look the other way, you're just as guilty as the people who are selling these girls and abducting them, you know? Okay, the, the man and woman that hid your body, were they paid to do that? It's making me feel like, no, not really. Okay. Do you have a message for those two? Um, she's just saying to come forth. Okay. What about for your brother and sister? What message do you have for those two? That I love them very, very much. And I will always protect them from being harmed. She says, please don't. Don't allow other people to take away your joy in life. She says, people can be very critical. Um, people are critical about mom and dad. Uh, but mom and dad and this whole situation does not determine who you are and what your future looks like. So find happiness. Um, wise words for a little says, girl. Says, don't don't be afraid. 
to open her heart, to love somebody, um, to start your own family, she says. She says, I will be there every step of the way and I will protect them. She's saying, I just want them to have a normal life where they can still be free, mm. where they can be left alone, yeah. not hunted by media, by interviewers. Um, I want them to have a normal, careless, free life where they can be happy and they can find their own achievements in life. That's awesome. Do you communicate ever or have you communicated with your parents or your siblings? Or tried? She says, I communicate with my siblings um, in their uh, dreams and uh, in their thoughts. Okay. So um, they do talk to me. Um, mom, mom talks to me as well. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you some more spiritual questions that I ask uh, everybody we interview. What was your spiritual mission in that life as uh, Manny McCann? Or McCann. Hmm. Well, she says, my biggest mission was not for me. My biggest mission was to um, to bring awareness to uh, child disappearances, to bring awareness to, um, to the idea of everybody working together, trying to find these missing children. She says, okay. what happens mostly is um, when people will report their children missing, um, they will show it on the news once and that's it. Yeah. Uh, you know, my face has been on the news for 10 years um, and they keep putting it out there, you know, and they should be doing that with every child missing. And I know that would be <laughs> a lot of work, yeah. but that is the only way we can work together and um, bring exposure to these children, but also exposure to the people who are taking them. Yeah. Because when your face is all over the news, I can guarantee you they will either let you go, they will let you go real fast, because they will be scared that they might be exposed. Yeah. Bringing exposure to missing children puts pressure on the people who have taken them, but also, um, prevents a lot of people from taking them because they'll know that this will bring a lot of media attention yeah. and it might not be the safest way to go for them. Okay. Uh, so in a way, it'll also prevent people from doing such horrible crimes. Were you here, uh, to, were you here to learn anything? Well, she says, I was just here to learn to accept. Okay. That's and to so, teach. Were you here to teach anything? Oh, go ahead. Then she said it's Maddie. Yeah, she says, um, I was here to teach my mom not to take, um, not to take verbal abuse. Um, when my father would yell and scream at me, I, I would go against him. Uh, hence the drugging. He didn't oh. like he didn't like to be talked back to. Yeah. Uh, so you were modeling that for your mother, like yeah. st stand up for yourself. I'm standing up for myself, mom. You should too. Was it, was it that? Yeah. And to this day, she's still working on it. She still hasn't been able to do so. Um, do you think you accomplished what you set out to accomplish? She says, I have. But in a way, it's still in working progress. Yeah, you're still working on your spiritual yeah. mission, really. Yeah. Okay. And she says, still, I'm still bringing awareness, and I'm still, um, I'm still working on giving people the courage to come forward and face up um, what they have done, and in that way, be liberated of the guilt that they feel. Okay. Uh, what was your transition like? She says, I didn't pass over right away. Um, it was almost like I went with where my body went. Like I wanted to see where it was going. Um, 
She says, once my body was left alone, um, somebody came and got me. Who? Um, he, she says his name was Laura. Her name was Laura? It was Laura. Um, and she says she, she was my guardian angel. She okay. was my angel working with me. She came and got me, and then um, she sang. We kind of went for a walk. She came and asked me if if she, if we should go for a walk and go watch the stars. Mm. And so I went with her, um, and then we kind of went through darkness with a whole bunch of stars around me, just like I was walking uh, in in the universe in the galaxy. Mm. Mm. Um, and then. Um, she says, people started appearing one after another, um, and they were hugging me, and they were telling me how much they loved me. Um, relatives? Yeah, I had uh, relatives there, but also uh, people that I recognized, but I didn't know from where. They just looked very familiar. Um, I later on discovered that we had been family members in past yeah. and um, future lives, mm -hmm. so there was a lot of people there to greet me. Um, I didn't feel any pain. I didn't feel um, good. I felt peaceful, and I felt like I was in a good place. Um, I didn't feel like I wanted to go home either. Mm. Um, was your death a spiritual contract? Were you was that a predestined exit point for you to accomplish your mission? Uh, she said yes, it was. Okay. All right. Uh, do you have any regrets? Um, she's saying no. Um, I lived life to the fullest. I tried to be as happy and as cheery and as fun as I could be. Um, even with the problems, I didn't let it get to me. So I think in that aspect, I, I succeeded in not um, getting hurt. Yeah, it seems like you decided never to become a victim of your father, but to stand up to him. So that probably helped a lot. He says, I was very strong and very strong-minded. Um, and I am happy that I had that quality and that I had the courage to stick with what I believe in and really tell my mind. I was not afraid to say what I thought about mom and dad. If they didn't get me right, I, they would know. I would let them know, and they didn't like that. They didn't like it um, okay. when I would talk back to them because I was still very young. But but you had a mouth on you, girl. Good for you. Stand up for, stand up for yourself. It doesn't make a difference what size you are, what age you are. Can you yeah. share another life, past or, or future? Uh, that most influenced your life as, as Maddie? Um, well, she says, I had a life where, and this looks like the 1930s, looking at their clothes. Um, she's saying, I was a happily married woman. I had a, a normal life. Um, mm -hmm. I was a housewife. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband would work uh, every day, go to work, come home. So a pretty normal life. Um, we didn't have big luxuries, but we would match. Uh, um, she says, I remember going to the market one day, and I took my little boy with me, and I was looking at um, some dresses. Um, and she says, all of a sudden, I remember looking around, and I couldn't see him, and I was yelling his name, and nobody would come, and I was in such a panic that I started mm. screaming his name from the top of my lungs, and people were looking at me because they didn't know what was going on, and um, my little boy was taken, Ugh. and so... Um, we never found him. Oh gosh! Uh, and have you uh, met? Have you met him now on the other side? I have. Okay. I have. We have, We still have. <laughs> we still have connections together, and we still have contact. So we have. We have different missions, but we're um, we're still in communication. Um, but she says, as a mom, 
not having a body to bury, not being able to say goodbye, not knowing whether he is still alive or not, was the hardest journey. If I look at all my lives, it was one of the hardest journeys um, I've ever been through. Um, I, I went imagine. into depression after that. I sure. couldn't. Um, I couldn't function anymore. Um, my husband eventually had to put me in a mental institution. Oh gosh! I really didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't want to be alive. Yeah. Um, and um, I did die in that mental institution. It, it was really a life of sorrow and grief, um, and really losing yourself, becoming this entity where there is no more emotions, where everything is shut off. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing you know is you're breathing and you yeah. want it to stop. Um, it was a really tough lesson. It was a really hard slot. Mm. Uh, do uh, you have any other messages for us at all? She's just saying, you know, it's it's okay. It's okay to let me go. Okay. Please look into these missing girls. Please look into these children who are disappearing every day. Um, okay. If we can all work together, if we can all keep our eyes open, you know, take a good look at the pictures, keep your eyes open, and I can guarantee you that a lot more children will be coming home yeah. if we just work together. Don't let the fear of um, being wrong, she says, don't let the fear of being wrong stop you from reporting anything that is suspicious. Yeah. Okay, anything. You hear a lot of yelling in a house where there are children. Please call the police. Yeah. Mention it. Because okay. if, you know, if, if you see a couple who's never had children and all of a sudden there are children in their yard playing or in their house constantly, mm. you know, um, that might ring a bell. You know, you might want to mention it. Um, that doesn't mean that everybody's a suspect. However, so many people knew things and suspected things and never uh, had the courage to mention it. Um, and if they had done that, then a lot more children would have been joined and rejoined with their parents by now. Um, don't let your fear stop you. Yeah. If it feels like something isn't right. Listen to your heart like um, hmm that's kind of suspicious um, mention it it doesn't mean you have to accuse people right away but maybe mention it you know look in the neighborhood or look on your Facebook if there's any missing children mm -hmm. uh, see if they look like them you know we all need to work together to bring an end to these abductions mm -hmm. to bring an end to um, the selling of small children, of young women, to the selling of, um, he's saying, you know, to the to the abuse and in the sexual abuse and the rape and she says there are so many horrible things being done to children and nobody seems to do much about it. We are more worried. We are more worried about the Kardashians than we are about these missing children. Terrible. We need to start having our priorities straight, and we need to all look and help to report things that are suspicious or out of the blue. Follow your heart. If it feels like something isn't right, report it. something. Report it. If it turns out to be nothing, at least you did something. Okay. Good words. Hey, have you re reincarnated? Or are you incarnate uh, in the world today at this time? She says, I am currently incarnated. Oh. <clears throat> she says, yes. Um, little girl, little boy. Uh, she says, I'm a boy. Um, and I've come into a very loving family. Thank God. Uh, where? Where uh, are you? 
year up again or she's saying nepal okay all right well, that's good to know we don't have much uh but we have each other um we're kind of like nomads we kind of travel around and family is everything to us mm -hmm. and um, this is a life where I want to experience um, community, where I want to experience equality in a group of people and unconditional love for one another. Good for you. Uh, that's what we're experiencing at this moment. Okay. Now, can you share anything new about yourself that we don't know? It could be fun. It could be serious. It doesn't make any difference. Anything the world does not know about little Maddie. Because I was a little bit of a glamour girl. I like oh, really? I like dressing up. Um, and she says I misses I, I miss <laughs> she had a little stuffed animal it looks like and mm -hmm. she misses that one. Oh what kind of animal was it? It just kinda looks like a little bear or something. Okay. Did you have a name for him? She's saying, no, I, okay. I just like sleeping with them. And uh, she left, she says, I left stuffed animals and I left, um, she's saying, I was just a normal, Look happy, yeah. you know, and um, I had to sacrifice myself. Ugh. Eric, do you have any questions for little Maddie? Um, He's saying, well, no, you know, it's, she, he's saying, you know, you can really tell that um, talking about it is not very comfortable for her. Mm -hmm. um, she's really trying to focus on doing good. She's really yeah. trying to focus on um, aiding people. Um, and in a way, that's where her healing is. Yeah. Uh, it is in um, in seeing that bringing awareness um, to other cases. Yeah, you know, it can really bring healing and can it can bring um, closure to uh, a lot of families. And it's in it's in that search for closure and that search for um, revelation of truth that she finds support in um, helping her go through um, the I grief. Feel, yeah. She still feels a grief yeah. that, um, that her mom and, and her dad really can't, you know, just be truthful about it, can just be, yeah. you know, say, hey, it was an accident yeah. and all of these things happen. Um, she says, the thing that bothers me is that they actually enjoy the attention. Oh. Um, mm. In a way, it bothers me. Yeah, um, I guess so. So, That's but she says, you know, it, it's all going to end up the way it's supposed to be. Um, she's saying, you know, to everybody else, um, the truth always comes out. It always does, and it might take a long time, but eventually it always comes out. I don't know if and I asked you this already, but will your body be found? I think I asked that already, but sorry, guys, if I did. Um, it, she's making me feel yes, but she's making me feel like there's not going to be much left. They're really yeah. going to have to on DNA Yeah, yeah. Okay. to identify her. Emma, do you have a question for her? No, this is just so. I, I'm normally I'm very bubbly and I'm very what? I know, but, but this is very disturbing. Very, very, very open and very, um, yeah. you know, they they have the understanding and they they have the the compassion for you know. Yes, we do bad things, but um, her energy really. It's, you know, I'm having a really hard time not crying. Yeah. She feels, it really feels different than everybody 
all the other ones I've ever done, um, it really feels like there's still a lot of hurt. There's still a lot of, um, although there's hurt, she tries to protect them. Um, there's kind of a duality, like a contradiction of emotions that she's still going through. And in that, in those contradictions, she's trying to do, she's, <laughs> It's almost like she's trying to say, yes, this was all for good. You know, this is... Because it was a spirit con spiritual contract, of course. Yeah, but it's 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 weird to me that she's... You know, I always have the idea because Eric is so, hey, I'm good, we're good. You know, a lot of them are so good with this. So I always kind of had the idea that, you know, once you pass on, you're good. You know, you, you yeah. make with it you have your life's review and you understand it and so there comes the acceptance and the understanding and the peace but now I'm starting to understand that some of these spirits still struggle some of these spirits still have the influence of the human uh, feelings yeah and Maddie why why do you hang on to your humanness to a some degree that's a good question I mean, when you know it's a spiritual contract and your parents played the part of relationship villains and so on. Okay, she says, I'm holding on to that human aspect of me uh, in order to stay closer to the children who are being taken, to, in ah. order to stay closer to my family, um, in order so I don't lose that insight, that connection with what it feels like to be human i don't want to fully distance distance myself from it okay when i feel the pain when i feel the hurt i use it in order to help uh these Others. other children okay that makes sense well you have been very brave talking about things that were not very comfortable for you to uh, discuss so thank you so much maddie She's saying, you're welcome. She's saying, this is this was not easy. Mm. Um, I don't talk to a lot of mediums about this um, because it's still so delicate. Yeah. Um, you know, and in a way, I know what my parents said was wrong. In another way, I'll, I also feel uh, a love towards them, and I don't want to see them get hurt either. So... Um, I understand that the truth will come out, and in that truth, they will learn the lessons, um, and that they need to learn those lessons. Um, but in the same way, I still want to protect them in a way. So, yeah, um, yeah sense. it's a little conflicting, she says. But I'm, I am happy that you gave me the opportunity to come forward. Um, and I just want to say to everybody, thank you for loving me. Mm. Thank you for thinking about me and for um, keeping me in your hearts. She says, I, uh, you know, you will always stay with me. Um, now, please do the same for others. They yeah. need you. That's right. I remember when, Eric, when you were like four, uh, my husband and I, with all five kids, were in the very busy San Antonio Riverwalk, and it was really crowded. And I had one small child, I can't remember, like Lucas, and, and uh, my husband had Annika or vice versa. And the two older girls and Eric were walking. And we turned around, and all of a sudden, we didn't see Eric there. And, oh, my gosh, right by the river. And we saw these two little kids looking in the river. said, so, oh, my God, he's drowned. Oh, we panicked. We were running uh, down the river walk. I mean, there was a mass of people. It was like I was already uh, imagining the news reports and everything. And as I was walking, looking around down to the river and, and amongst the people, Something told me to look up and to my uh, right, and I looked up a set of stairs that goes up to the street above, and there was Eric talking to a, a, a woman, and, oh, God, that felt so good. Was that woman a guardian angel? She was watching over him. But, I mean, something, yeah. something nudged me to look. And why would I look up instead of around the river and um, amongst the people? He's saying, yeah, she, she was one of my guardian angels, and she was actually stopping me because um, um, she's saying uh, they were pointing you towards in the right direction, and, and she really stopped him because he was going to keep going. <laughs> Eric says, well, you know, I, I just wanted to go see and explore. Oh, my but gosh. But I, I have, as, as a mom, you know, when I see Maddie, she's blonde, and she's so cute. She's got blue eyes. My daughter's the same way. Blonde, blue eyes, cute. Yeah. And, 
every day I'm terrified that she's going to be taken. And every day I, wherever I go, I am, when I go to an amusement park, I'm like paranoid. I know. Like, I don't let go of my hand in one second. I have arm bracelets with my phone number on it and everything. Good. You know, just, I hope I never have to go through something. Oh, you won't. You won't. Uh, but I know that I, I always tell my kids, I've always told them, don't go up to a police officer if you get lost. Go up to a woman, you know, especially if it's a mother. Because you never know yeah. when a police, when somebody's impersonating themselves as a cop. Never yeah, go to a guy. Always go to a woman, especially there, a mother. There are a lot of people who abduct children who dress up as somebody who seems trustworthy, oh, yeah. like a or fireman or a police officer or anything like that. That's right. They, you know, that's what they do. But yeah, we just, you know, I think in life we just, and Eric is saying, you know, he's saying the same thing. He's saying, you know, we, we just need to stay positive and, and really don't dwell on it. And when it does happen, you know, we just all need to work together to find it and to show the people who take them that, hey, don't mess with society. We're going to get you. Um, and really give them, give them an example and say, you know, they need to know that they can't just, uh, take somebody and get away with it. Good. You know, we well, need they, to all work together and when everybody's looking, I can guarantee you they will panic okay. and they will not do it again. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, thank you, Maddie. Goodbye, sweetie. Thank you, Eric. I love you. Thank you, Emma. Love you too. And this has been very, very much, I did not expect these answers. So we'll see what every, all you out there think about it too. It was a hard one for me. Yeah, it was hard for me to listen to. Bye mm -hmm. everybody. Stay tuned for information on how to connect with Emma to follow. Bye. Bye.